Hi there and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about detecting when someone is out of office using Power Automate. Let's go. All right, so this is another segment of Ask the Audience. Now in this case, it didn't come directly from YouTube, but I felt it was a good question and it was a question I couldn't answer off the top of my head. So I figured why not share this learnings with you as well. So in a recent training that I was providing, um, I had the question, if I send out an approval, how can I go ahead and check to ensure that they're not out of office before I do so? And that got me thinking, hmm, I wonder if that is even possible. And so I did find out that it is possible, hence this video. And so let's talk just a little bit more about it. Now, automation is great when it works, but it's super frustrating when it doesn't. And naturally, business processes will break down when your automation doesn't work. But we can go ahead and proactively detect if someone has automatic replies on. And that's the thing that you always set up inside of Outlook whenever you're going on vacation or gonna be sick. And as a result, we can actually tap in to that information through the Office 365 Outlook connector. And more specifically, there is a action that allows us to retrieve mail tips. Now, mail tips is something that is part of the overall exchange service itself. And so ever notice that when you're in Outlook and you're starting to type, you might see, oh, like this person's external. You might see uh, someone's out of office, basically message right then and there. Well, this is the same API that we can go ahead and use, but this time through Power Automate as opposed to the Outlook client. Now, this generally will work for internal email addresses. It may work for external email addresses because uh, there's obviously some prerequisites that have to happen. Number one, you have to allow your out of office messages to be available to people outside your organization. So I will link you to the documentation for that specific scenario because we're not gonna get into that in this video itself. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so here's the documentation link that I talked about previously. I will include this inside the description of this video. And this just explains a little bit more about how Mail Tips works and some of the features. Uh, something I didn't mention before was that it also can be used to detect whether or not someone's mailbox is full. So if you run into that situation where someone is always running out of disk space, because it's say a shared mailbox, uh, you can go ahead and check that out and use this feature once again. So let's go ahead and let's just get right into the demo and see this in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and just walk you through the design of this flow. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test three different scenarios. And so the, the three scenarios are, number one, just happy path. So if someone does not have automa automatic replies enabled, we're just gonna go ahead and send out an approval with to that person and we're going to be confident that they're available and that they're in the office okay so that's scenario one scenario two is we're going to get into a situation where we detect someone does have their out of office set but now we have to make a choice do we just send it anyways because it is not time sensitive or do we want to and this would be scenario three go ahead and provide an alternative email address that we can then go and send it to someone else, kind of like an escalation. So those are the three different scenarios. Happy path, when we're just gonna send it anyways, we know they're out of office, but we'll go ahead and send it to them. And then the third one would be, yes, we detect that they're out of office and we are going to go ahead and escalate it and send it to someone else. And we're actually gonna use an approval in that scenario to ourselves as the sender or the requester in order to provide an alternative email address. Okay, so here we just have a simple trigger and this is a little bit arbitrary, just more so, so I can uh, demo demonstrate this to you. As part of the input, I've got an email address, and this would represent the email address that we want to go ahead and send this approval to. 
Now what I have done is I've gone ahead and just initialized a variable where I'm gonna go ahead and retrieve this value um, because we're gonna see this later on where I can overwrite or update this variable and that's why we're storing this data in the variable itself. Now this is the, the key component that we're interested in here. This is the get mail tips for a mailbox version two action that's part of the Office 365 Outlook email connector. And here what we can do is pass an email address into this and then we will go ahead and get the mail tips for that mailbox. Now do know you can add multiple, so if you wanted to check a bunch, you can do that. I'm gonna keep things simple for this video and just focus on a single individual email box. Now here what's going on is I'm just capturing this information partly for debug purposes so that I can actually just show you the value of the automatic replies. The other thing that do note is since you can provide multiple email addresses inside of this, naturally you're gonna get an array back. And so as you would expect with inside of automation, Power Automate, you can go ahead and use a dynamic content value and it's gonna automatically put a loop. So that's why we have a loop there that is just automatically being added to our canvas. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the empty function or empty expression and we're gonna populate the output of this compose action into empty. Now, what's gonna happen is we're gonna see an empty node being returned from our mail tips action when someone doesn't have it populated. So that's what we're detecting. We're gonna say, is this empty? Which means that they're in the office and there's not any sort of planned absences there. And so if it's true, we're gonna head over to our happy path and we're just gonna go ahead and send out an approval to the original email address that was provided to us and was stored inside of our variable right here. Now, naturally, this is where you would go ahead and implement further logic about, okay, did they approve it and dealing with that scenario. But for this video, that's not really important at this point in time. So that's happy path, that's scenario one. Then let's shift to scenario two. So when we find that there is data inside of this automatic replies node, meaning someone has set that up inside of their mailbox, we are gonna go ahead and send out an approval and the approval is gonna basically go to the requester, whoever requested the original approval. And so we're gonna use this email address, which is part of our trigger. Now don't confuse, I've got two email addresses that show up in the trigger. This is the out of box one that represents who clicked the button, right? Which is different than our approval email address, which is the one that we're actually populating. So in this case, scenario two, we're gonna go ahead and send the approval back to the original requester, letting them know that their recipient is out of office or they have automatic replies enabled. And then we're saying, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna go ahead and send it out anyways? Or do you wanna go ahead and reassign? And so that's what's happening here is we're gonna use an approval to capture their feedback, capture their response. So if the original requester says, oh, okay, they're out of office, and certainly we can include those details in here if we wanted, like the actual, they're out of office uh, message here, we could do that. We could say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and approve that, I'm okay with it. They're only out this afternoon, they're doing training, no problem, so let's just send it to them anyways. And so in that case, we are gonna go ahead and say, yeah, approve it. And then I've just created just different titles so you can sort of see when we're running through the demos, each specific use case. Here, they are out of office. We're gonna send it to them anyways, no problem. And then we can just check the outcome. Once again, not gonna implement those details here. That's very subjective and based on your scenario. So that's scenario number two, where we have, an, we detect that they're out of office, but we wanna send it anyways. Now. In scenario number three, this is what we're calling the escalated path. So the requester gets their approval. The recipient is detected as being out of office. We want to go ahead and send it to someone else. And this is what we're gonna say is reject it when you get the approval and then in the comments, provide an email address that we can send this to. And so we're gonna head down this path over here and we are going to then send the escalated approval to, and this is where we have the assigned to, this is going to be the response comment dynamic content field. And so obviously this has to be a little tricky. Someone puts in a bad email address, uh, things can go sideways quickly. So probably wanna add some additional logic around that as well. And then here, once again, not gonna implement that custom logic, but this would represent an approval that is going over to an escalated party. 
All right, so I'm now in my Outlook client on the web, and I'm going to go through scenario one, which are, is our happy path. Someone does not have automatic replies enabled. So you might be asking yourself, where do you go ahead and set that up? Click on the gear, click on the Outlook settings, and then head down to automatic replies, and we can see it's currently turned off. Perfect. So what we can do is go back to our flow, and we will hit test, and we will perform the trigger action. So let's hit test. and we will provide a, an email address. And we will now go ahead and run it. So we've kicked off our trigger. We have gone through and initialized our email address variable. And then what we've done is we've retrieved the get mail tips for a specific mailbox. Here we can see the mailbox is not full and that we have an empty node for our automatic reply. So remember, previously we talked about the empty expression. We're gonna take this value and put it into the empty expression and in this case it's gonna return false, uh, or sorry, it's gonna return true in the sense that it is actually empty. Now we should have an approval waiting for us and we can see that this is our original request, our happy path, so we can go ahead and just click on submit and that will now complete that specific flow. And so we can see that it has succeeded successfully. Let's just take a quick walk through the run history here. And so we got the mail tips, we detected that it was empty and then we sent out an, uh, an approval request to the original email address because they were in the office. Cool, so that is scenario number one. Now let's go to scenario number two. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and enable automatic replies. So let's turn on automatic replies. Uh, this is sort of optional, but we can actually see um, how long people are out of office for. So we'll just enable that and then we can say, okay, I'm currently out of the office, please contact someone in my absence. This is where you can go ahead and send replies outside of your organization. That will have an impact on whether or not you can use this with external senders. So something to be aware of there. So let's go ahead and let's hit save. Let's close this down and then let's go ahead and run our flow once again. Put in the email address and click on run flow and then done. Now in this case, let's take a look at the get mail tips. So here we can go ahead and see that automatic replies has data. Now as part of automatic replies, we have the message itself. So this is what you could load into the approval. If you wanted to share that information with the requester to determine whether or not they want to escalate it. If someone's just out of the office for a couple hours, it's probably okay to proceed with the approval. But if they happen to be out of the office for two weeks because they're on vacation, then you may want to redirect. So that is available to us. We can also see other things like the language that the message is in, and then also the schedule time and the end time. So once again, that can help you with your decision making. So we should have an approval in place here. And so this is going back to the original requester saying the user who you wanna send the approval to is oof. So please approve to continue as is. Otherwise you can click on reject and provide the email address. So this is scenario number two. We're just gonna go ahead and click submit and that will then go ahead and send out the approval to our original recipient. We're just acknowledging that they are out of office. And so for this reason, I've gone ahead and sort of captured the title as being oof just to for debug purposes. We can just go ahead and approve this just to complete the process. Now this flow will complete and we can see the path that it took. In this case, it came down here, it was not empty, so then we head over to the if no, and then what we're gonna do is send out the approval to the requester saying, do you want to proceed um, as planned? And that's exactly what we've done here. We've said, yeah, go ahead and send that out, and then we would go and send the original request out as, as we planned. Now, so that's scenario number two. Scenario number three, is just a variation of scenario number two. We don't have to change anything, but uh, we will go ahead and run it. The mail tips will be exactly as planned. We've got the approval in place. Now this time we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reject. 
and we need to provide an email address. Yes, I'm using the same account here, but the sort of principles still apply. And this is going to reject and send it to someone else. And we will get another approval that will say escalate it because just to represent that we've gone ahead and, and escalate it. So maybe I would send it to someone else who's on the same team as my recipient. Maybe I would send it to their leader. And, and certainly you can automate that piece in by using the Office 365 Users Connector, but really up to you. Now, here is the our, our last approval and we can see that it was escalated. And just to complete the process, we'll go ahead and hit submit. Okay, so here, let's just follow the breadcrumbs. And we can see that we did have automatic replies. And then in this case, we did want to uh, reassign and we indicated that by clicking on reject. And then what happens is we head over to the far right path, which allows us to go ahead and send out our escalated approval. And that concludes our demo. So I hope you found that interesting. I think it's definitely a scenario that you're going to run into quite frequently uh, with approvals. And, and yes, there is a, a reassign capability that does exist, but it's very dependent upon the end user to go ahead and reassign. And so the point here is that someone may not be available to do that reassignment and we can proactively detect that and then account for it inside of our logic, which is pretty cool. So thanks again for checking out this video. I really appreciate all the engagement I've been getting lately on, on YouTube. Um, if you're not following me on Twitter, feel free to reach out at Weirzy. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Likes, comments, also very much appreciated as well. So take care and we'll see you next time on the channel.